Tactics. My name is Chase, and today I am joined by Pat, uh, as usual. So, and I also have uh, Daniel Powell, the recent winner of the Majestics Open Series in Longmont, Colorado. The champ is here! Yep. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> I, I mean, you did probably travel the farthest, so... Like I, I didn't, I didn't mind that you know when I lost you because I was like, you know what? At least he he came out here, he made an effort, you know. Yeah, it was like twelve hundred miles from home. It was the furthest I've gone, and now it'll be uh, the furthest I'll go is out to Pat's in December. So yeah, did how much time did you spend on your team? Um, it looked oh. like you really spent a lot, like you had all of that. You know, you had your strategy down for like every matchup. That's um. Cool. I had to, man. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, you, your your format out there is wide open, right? But there's, you know, just archetypes to deal with just in general. Um, so, you know, I kind of went with just a standard build plan, right? Lots of damage, hardy, hard to KO, um, pretty standard, right? Can withstand a big shot um, and recover. You know, I figured that'll handle most everything. Um, and did a pretty good job. So, yeah, yeah you, I mean, you played that really. You played well. it really, really well. It's, you know what's fine. what's interesting is that in this format, there's a lot of Sinestro battery teams, and like, it doesn't really matter against your against your team. Right. Yeah, I knew that was big. Right. Because well, I mean, it wasn't so much the Sinestro. I mean, it was the Sinestro Gabi. Right. Because that's just kind of the straightforward. Yeah. But it, you could insert Everybody, anything you want. Right. And then even the um, the Hulk had won a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, and while it wasn't Sinestro, right, it was 19 defense, you right. have, to hit, have to hit it hard. Yep. So, you know, I figured 15 attacks, pretty good. I could yeah. probably I could probably hit. And, you know, really, the I'll have to give a quick shout-out to my wife, Sam. She's always there for my dice luck, and that was the other thing. Uh, as I can always go to her round to round for dice luck. I was thousand miles from home. I didn't have her for dice luck. I needed that fourteen and that fifteen attack, so I didn't need the dice luck so much. <laughs> well, between that and all the prob, you, know, you had the prob on uh, yeah. that lockjaw too. And you know what's funny? Like throughout the day when I was watching you, uh, when you would play these guys, they would be like, you'd be like, oh, so uh, I'm a thirteen, and they're like, no, you're eleven. Like, no, I have the hammer, and I'm also plus two from the. Perplexed, like, oh, damn, you're still a 13? Like, yeah. Still- <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. And that's yeah. with Sinestro. That's when you're yeah, going to get Sinestro. That, that's, yeah, that's why it was really impressive. Um, so there's three Sinestro teams there, right? Yeah. Least. Because you there's, played Did you play against I, Conrader, Dan? Did you play against the Conrader guy? I did. I did. Okay. Um, and you just, you just hit him past the stop click or what? Uh, Green Arrow connected. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, I went uh, I went twelve for five, right? Uh, negative two okay. plus negative two plus two. Green arrow, Green arrow made the connect, rolled the seven. Oh, sh- totally forgot about that. That's right. Um, in your article, you were writing, oh yeah, and this is further legitimizes the the people who wonder about subscribing. You wrote about this team, and you played it, and you won. Um, yeah. You mentioned Uru Forge as like the best or the most you I think you said this is the un, most underused or you wonder why people aren't using Ura Forge. After I saw you play it, I'm like, that should be almost your team should be two hundred and ninety points plus Ura Forge. Yeah. At, like almost at all if, if if you can swing it, because geez, you really you changed like I think you used three different hammers? Or so I use I use Skurns most often. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um and then I used uh, Great Thoughts and the yellow battery on Lockjaw. And then um, against uh, – and then Kurth against Chase. Yeah, for the for the barrier, yeah. Just real quick, why don't you tell what you were playing? Uh, so I played um, Star Fox, Lockjaw, Ironheart, uh, Groot with um, the Indigo battery, Sniper Rifle, Decoy, Spotlight, uh Bulldozer, Mallet, uh, Uru Forge, Gamma Bomb, uh, Uru Forge, Gamma Bomb, and Mjolnir, Green Arrow ID, (laughs) Green Arrow ID, Wolverine ID, Cyclops Student ID, and I had one more ID. I had four. 
Nova. Uh, Nova. Yeah, no, Nova. Same, that's right. what and, me. Uh, Gale Bomb and Boxing Ring. <laughs> so, like, the full gamut. Everything. Right. Yeah. I had a full sideline. I had all of the Indigo constructs in my bag. Um, and I had the Boxing Ring. So all the on-map, on-map, on off-map elements I could possibly That's leave. crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I will say something too. Like I know you said, like it's two ninety, two ninety plus ten points. Your team. I think the minute you put any um, relic in that's that's under ten points, that should just be your force because then you can switch it out. That was the thing that was so that was so good about your team is there was it was hard to kill. It had uh, an answer for just about everything that I could think of. You know, it turned off uh, being able to shoot it with the uh, with the uh, indigo. It was uh, it was a really really good team. I got to give you credit for that for sure. Yeah, no, thank you. That it just needed yeah. to be it needed to be versatile. Did you think about anything other than hammers for the Ura Forge? Uh I did I did from my article I did change the Mox hammer out for Millennium Eye. Oh, uh, but you never uh, used it, right? I never used it. Just the, the matchup wasn't there for it on Saturday. Yeah. Um so yeah, no, actually, you know, I ran through every every relic that was under ten points. That's um, cool. See that that's was, Putting in time. In my review, yeah. yeah. Putting in time. Uh, oh, you gotta, you gotta play split lip with it though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's I mean, kind of like a must. At the, I mean, you're not gonna use a power action to try and pick a five or six. Yeah. Mm. You know what though? It, yeah, maybe not a five or six, but I, I've seen people just play the omega, omega drive just the power action. Yeah, the omega so, drive isn't yeah. nearly as bad. I think if it's if it's a under, under four, I think it's fine to do power action. But if it's like four or six, four through six, yeah, you have to, you have yeah. to play uh, him because because it, didn't it take you like one game? It took you like three turns, right, Dan? The final, up. the final match, it took me three turns to pick yeah. up Brinkos with uh, with yeah. Lockjaw. Um, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm just never going to get this thing picked up. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he only has one guy that you know, so you're just like, cool. At least I know he can only do that. Right. Exactly. Uh, but no, I mean, I think probably two thirds of the matches I picked it up turn one. It was just yeah. roll. Uh, I did have one match where I didn't pick up the Uru Forge three turns. Oh wow! Out of three back to back ones, I was like, and you still oh. got to pick up the hammer after. But then once I got the hammer pick up, it was like picked up. Yeah, that's uh, cool, man. Dice are weird like that sometimes. Um, so now you have a travel buddy, or PJ has a travel buddy now. Yes, that. yes, we are mapping out. We are mapping yeah, out our awesome. travel plan. So, um, so, so what do you? So this is a, this is the actual first time you played in this format like this, or did you guys have you guys been playing that over there at all? Uh, I mean, we had a win a map. Yeah, uh, back in June with the format. Um, but no, I mean, I had just uh, play tested against some of the top four lists. Oh, uh, nice. Kind of, and not really with somebody. It was just more of watching your videos uh, that you posted on the Facebook. Okay. Um, and just kind of uh, doing the doing the general with his uh, big long stick, moving pieces across the board. Like <laughs> this, this is how I think it goes. This is how it should go. Um, you know, like when I played Chase, you know, I was like, I know what all these pieces do. There's a pretty good assumption that there's going to be a wall and a pulse wave coming at some point, as an example. Um, and sure enough, you know, a wall and a pulse wave came at uh, at some point. So, uh, you know, it was wide open, right? You know, it's hard to just play test against. Everything. Well, you don't know what you're going to see. Like, even, you know, I play what I've been playing because I know it, and it gives a decent answer to a lot of things. Uh, but you just don't – you have no idea what you're going to set it down across from. Right. It was like uh, it was like the guy that played Kyle Rayner, right? That that really hadn't broke through in any of the lists that I had seen, and uh, I saw I that he was playing it. I, I saw that he was playing it. And I was like, "Oh, Kyle Rayner exists." Better not. <laughs> the boogeyman I, for so long too. Yeah, that's why I played Green Arrow. That's why. I guess that's all one of the reasons why Kyle Rayner shouldn't be in the format. <laughs> Because he could just get hit. Well, now, to be fair, I that was one of the things with my team is that Star Fox did get Green Arrowed once, maybe twice. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm playing Green Arrow. Other people are playing. So, uh, 
Um, but I had kind of planned on that with having Ironheart and uh, Lockjaw as backup, and in those games, albeit they were close, uh, those two those two folks were able to mop it up for me. Yeah. Um, so what do you think so far after that? What do you think of the format? Oh, I dig it. I dig it. I um, it was fun to go around and uh, uh, dig out all my old pieces. <laughs> You know, from a competitive standpoint, I really enjoyed it from a competitive player. But as a collector, um, you know, all that stuff I had on my team, uh, I enjoyed being able to collect it, uh, get some of the few pieces that I was missing. Um, and then, you know, in preparation for the format, I've gone out and got, um, like, the uh, Morgul Blade. There you from, go. Oh. From Lord do? of the Rings. Oh, I, it's, it's like the, uh, it's like, it's like, it's semi-precision strike. It can't be reduced below one. Oh. Uh, yeah. And um, there's the uh, the cloak of something. I'm not going to mispronounce it, but there's a cloak from Lord of the Rings. Lothalorian cloak? Yeah, there's a few of those things that wow, are... Wow, pulled uh, that one out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, I did all the research. I went through my collection. I, I you know, I eBayed a bunch of things that I didn't have. Um, you know, just in case I wanted to play them, I'd be ready for them. So. You know, what's cool is, and that's kind of what, remember Chase, I was saying about this format, it um, it it'll make people look at older things and maybe buy some of the older things that you wouldn't normally think of, and it, that that would actually help the secondary market too, because people now are probably going to be looking at split lips because you know another guy won with a split lip. It still it makes it makes pieces still relevant. It makes your question. Yeah. Look at how much stuff you have sitting behind you. Again, that is insane. And now you actually get the chance to actually go through yeah. that and yeah. and All play. Those it. And, I mean, I know you said that one of the reasons you kind of brought your Cosmic team is that you can kind of, you're trustworthy, like you're traveling, you want to be something comfortable. But you know there's still a lot of other paces that, pieces that you want to play. Yeah, no, for sure, right? <laughs> I was traveling a 1,000 miles. You know, Star Fox and Lockjaw are, good, they're, they're familiar, you know. Um, I didn't want to go too wild. I mean, that's 75 and then 90 for the Star, for the Star Fox Milnier, so. 165 points of the team was was familiar, along with Groot, so 185. Yeah. Um, Groot could have been – Groot was uh, more McTaggart for a while. Um, nice. I, I just – I did, really just needed a leadership for about two – one to three turns. Um, so the, the points just worked out um, to just have a Groot. And I was like, retail's fine. Uh, leadership, I just need it for a turn or two. Um so that worked out okay. And in, and in Chase's game, I had uh, leadership for most of the game. Is, yep. Is the, uh, the, uh, that Groot is a petrified wood, man. I will never attack your Groot ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was funny in the finals when it died. I was like, hey, you know that his I looked are- right at I looked right yeah. at you. I was like, hey, it does die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. Funny. Um, hey, so how strong is Hobbit? Is he strong? Uh, physically wise, he is very, <laughs> he is very strong. He is very strong. Yes. Can I, so. Actually, can I just put that as the picture for the video, for the yes, podcast this awesome. week? I'll put the Majestics and it'll just, I have a picture That's of you two Armas. Cause you're like, uh, you're like, all right, are, are you even trying? Cause if, if, if you're not, then you got me. He's like, all right, fine. <laughs> like, Damn. Yeah. I, I am working on the weight loss personally. Oh uh, yeah. You look good, man. You look good. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to lose the weight and then I'll work on bulking up so I can. Uh, That's cool, man. I, I can still pick up Hobbit and. Uh, oh yeah, you can it. toss him. Yeah, we yeah I can I can still toss him around. I just can't take him in the arm wrestling. So. He'll stay. He'll go. Next, that- next year it's gonna be it's gonna be the the arm wrestler. You're gonna be back for it then. That's gonna be the real match. That's right. Yeah. How tall are you, Dan? How tall are you? Uh, I'm six foot six. Are you taller than Alex? Taller than Alex. I am right. Yes, I think I am taller than Alex. I'd have to go back and look at some of our pictures. Dang, because, um, yeah, jeez. Um, I am I am right at Jason Coombs' height when he doesn't wear his three-inch uh, heels. <laughs> so, uh, let me sorry there. Yeah. Um, no, ask him. That's why, he wears, that's why he wears the big cowboy boots, so that he is definitely taller than the tallest Europlitz players. That's funny, man. <laughs> It's funny, dude. Intimidation tactics. Yeah. So, are you ready for? That's what I got the beer for. <laughs> so. so, are you uh, 
getting ready for the uh, cup? Oh, for sure, for sure. So you have your team? Uh, do I have my team? Well, so uh, that was interesting. I did not have the team firm firm until Battle Royal date was released. Oh yeah. Uh, so 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 Battle Wars releasing the week of the cup. Uh, so so it won't be legal for the cup. So uh, what is today? August twenty second. Yeah. Yep. Twenty two. Um. So we've got seven weeks and before the cup. So yeah, it'll be it'll be well, three days, I guess to use a football term. Um, we'll have practice every day, me and Sam, uh, and then we'll have group practice uh, on the on row twenty. Uh, so how's okay? So this is this is gonna be good insight for some people out there about you know looking about thinking about teams or whatever um, team dynamics. You just said you practice every day and then you do roll twenty. How, how many? Like how, how's like a, a, a testing session? Go for you guys. Like, what's what's the process? So, I mean, it's going to be team. It's going to be most of us just kind of in a group call, um, and you know, you run through scenarios, right? Um, you know, if you if you mess something up, right? It's say it, we all say, "Hey, you messed that up. You need to roll that back. You need to do it from here instead of here in this scenario." And here's this scenario. And then if it's like, you know, if you got a 13 on an 18 and then you roll back to back fours, we say, okay, sure, you missed this one, but let's see what happens if you did hit. Because that's, back, back yeah. to back fours. You, you know, know, that's so funny that you mentioned that because there was a guy last night that came into the store that was asking about things like that, how we test. And I, I gave him almost the same example. I was like, if you need a five and you roll like a four and a four, we'll just say that on that second one you hit because – that would be more indicative of what the a game a game would be, um, because then it might skew your uh, your results. Because you're only you know you're only playing a handful of games, you're not going like the full 100 200 games so you can get the full statistical outcome by going that route. So you have to make a couple changes here and there. That, that's funny, and that's and that's I, I think a lot of a lot of you know a lot of high level teams will do that. We actually don't do. Um, we don't do crit misses and crit hits. Right. Yeah, neither do we, right? If you roll a crit hit do, or crit miss. Yeah. If we do crit miss, it's just a miss. If it's a crit hit, it just counts as a hit and doubles. That's it. Right. Now, we do uh, count crit misses and, say, a large type swarm team. Right. Uh, if you're going to make it a bunch of attacks. A bunch of attacks. If you're going to make a bunch of attacks, a crit miss will eventually show up. Yeah. Um, That's a good point. Uh, you know, because you don't have infinite amounts of probs. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That I think that's a it's a great thing, and I think uh, a lot of you know teams out there that are maybe looking at the higher higher levels. This is a good good insight into it. Um, what would what would you say is something like you you know you as advice for teams looking at like something definitely don't do or do when you're practicing? Um, I tell you what, the the biggest thing for us is be supportive, and this is something we've learned over the years. Be supportive of your teammates' ideas. Um, don't don't ever discount an initial idea. Um, you know, some ideas you may not you might know it's not going to be a great idea, but run it through the chat. Let's get that idea to a formulation point, right? Let's say I don't I don't I don't want even something crazy to think about like uh, running photon. Let's yeah. say running photon as an example. Let, let's talk about why photon would be good let's run that through why photon would be good first and yeah. then let, let's talk about why photon is bad yeah and if the good is greater than the bad or the bad is greater than the good yep. then we put that into a slot but don't ever say oh photon's dumb nobody's gonna pull yeah. the logs. you know what's funny uh, is that when you uh that you mentioned i say wow this is funny how a lot of these are, are we're very similar what we do we do the same thing but um we do it over coffee we'll uh we always call it. We used to call it uh, pie. Like you know when um, in Men in Black, when they're when 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 Will Smith is like he can't figure out some some problem they're trying to do, and then uh, uh, Josh Rowland's like, or is Tommy Lee Jones? I think it was Part Three, where he goes, "Hey, let's go, uh, let's go get some pie." He's like, "Why?" He's like, "We got to figure." It's like, "No, let's just go get some pie." So they're eating and they're just talking, and then they figure out what they need to do, and then he says, "Oh, that's why we get pie." So we do the same thing, but. We we do it over coffee. We'll go to like a coffee shop, and then we we bring out they bring out the phones, and then they just start 
throwing anything they got against and throw it against the wall. And then we do exactly what we do. We, we talk about, okay, what's your idea? This one. And they say, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? And then, like, if it passes the, the initial test, then it'll go on, um, okay, well, let's look at that team and then fill it out. And then you can t then we'll go to this testing stage. But like you said, man, if if, if if the bad outweighs the good, then we don't even bother. Yeah, right. But, but they will like you know it's like I said it's it's you just throw everything and see what sticks on the wall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a that, that's a that's a good one, man. Yeah. People, people need to uh, pay for this kind of info, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we I mean that's something we'll we'll schedule we'll schedule meetings. Um. But do you do it? You say you do it on Roll Twenty, or do you guys do it at the store, or what? No, so so we our team is not all in in Kentucky. We've yeah, got we've got we've got Alex in Tennessee, and and Mike and uh, Lane, and down in Florida now. Um, and, and even and even I'm and even I'm 45 minutes from the other guys in Owensboro. So uh, oh. you know we we use Facebook Messenger, uh, yeah. and and then Skype if we just need to talk or Discord. Um, so a lot of time it's just talking, and then when we need to put uh, pencil to paper per se, we we go to we use the roll twenty. Nice. So then, when it comes to actual just physical testing, is just you and Sam. Uh, physical testing will be with the guys in Owensboro and. Oh, okay, you'll Sam, go. Okay. Sam and I, and. Uh, Who's in Owensboro? Uh, Jason, David, Jeremy, and Zach. Oh yeah, that's right, and uh, and Kyle, right? Uh, Kyle, Kyle's not on the team anymore, actually. He what happened? Retired now. He retired. Oh. What about the other Kyle? Uh, the other Kyle. Mope. Oh, no, he, he's never been on our team. <laughs> I know. Just, I just, I just associate everybody at Owensboro on one team because you guys all just, like, hang out with each other. You know, you guys all hang out. Like, when I went there, I thought you guys were all one group. I didn't know that there was, like, Factions within the within the story. Yeah, so Kyle. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle lives. Uh, Kyle lived. Kyle uh, moped kid lived two hours south of us. So. Oh okay. Um, and then and then at least once or twice a year, um, I actually rent out a uh, hotel conference room, and uh, I meet in the middle with uh, PJ. Nice. Oh wait wait wait. PJ's Phoenixness, sir. What are what are we talking yeah. about? Here? I've I've posted that post. Do I need to cut that out of the <laughs> podcast? No, I, I, hey, I've, I've, I've totally uh, I've totally posted that on public on social media. So um, oh, poaching poaching PJ. No, it's no poaching. It is a uh, it is a cross team collaboration. Mm. Um, Only you know about it, right? For me. <laughs> no, every everybody knows about it. But I mean, that's just that's just what it takes, <laughs> right? So, yeah. but like you take you take for December, right? Um, yeah, you know, obviously you two guys are gonna. Yeah, so you know PJ and I will definitely have to get together and uh, you know get get that in in person practice. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you know, you know, it'd be funny. I would just totally love to see this uh, this uh, like this is totally like a wrestling rips off his shirt and it's clicks off underneath. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, like, oh my god! Oh. It's it's, it's a it's a big turn, you know. It's like, oh man, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't think I can keep PJ away, but uh, um, he he is a he is a really great friend. Uh, yeah, to be able to bounce ideas off of. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And he lends everything to everyone. Yeah. Oh really? Crazy. I think they started like the Mooching House page, right? Mm-hmm. Where you people like lit, post like, hey, I need to borrow this for here, and then who can who can let me. Bar, and then someone will you know, answer and you bring it or whatever. Like Aaron posted on the uh, for the Fresno event. All right, who needs to use stuff for the Fresno event? And people are, are posting what they need so Aaron can bring it. But Aaron has everything too, so he can uh, he can lend it all. So yeah, cool. I mean it's one of those things. Like when you announced your format um, and that it was going to be a thing. Uh, even before I when this was when you announced it for I think USA Cup last year was the first time yes, you ran it. Yes, yeah, we had a good show for that. I, I started I started last year. Nice. Um, Phil and Hove in my collection. This one you had the um, champ. You know, I started out as a collector, right? I, I'm I'm always a collector at heart. I love I love collecting this stuff and playing it. So. Clearly, look in the back. <laughs> yeah. And and that's not even all of it. Um, but. Uh, 
you're sitting on a mound of it right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> like his yeah, chair is just made, his chair's made, made of, of colossals and beetles. Yeah. Yeah, it's made of C-U-R all glued together. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's exactly what I was going to say, just a bunch of commons. Yeah. Um, yeah but no, I mean, it, it is, it's part of it, man. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that format and, and collecting all the stuff, right? Because it was, it was going back and looking at some of that stuff that uh, I didn't have. So. And you know, that's, and kind of like one of the things to make this legit per se is to have a lot of like the higher level guys and the more well known guys endorse it. You know, so then, because, um, you know, like, for example, the I know the, the Pacific Northwest guys, they have their, like, it's called, like, PNW Restricted or whatever, but no one even knows because right. no one recognizes it. It's just like how The Rock didn't become a thing until it was recognized by everybody as a thing, right? Yeah. And then help that, that HC Realms and TCG Player were behind it. So something like this, you know, it have to, you know, all the writers – all the high level plays that go travel and obviously the stores that run it all have to endorse it. And, you know, I think so far, so far is so good. Um, I think obviously the more things come out, we might have to maybe rein some things in because I know, I do know that, you know, like something like Tiago had mentioned, he wanted uh level seven and green arrow ID to be like on the ban list. <laughs> I don't think level seven is as bad as. I I don't either. I don't know. But like we didn't talk about, we talked about the way back the green arrow. What's yeah. That? No, do you remember that Dan when he was when we were, when I had uh, asked about initially about uh, the orange like uh, Ophidian and orange battery and then he's like oh let's let's talk about or when I added the book and uh, Tiago was like well we need to talk about level seven and green arrow ID. Right. Couple, right. Was, yeah yeah we need to talk about it. So I'm like oh is that really a problem? I think they I think they're a necessary evil though right. Right. I mean, it's, it, it is, um, I think it is a necessary evil in the format. Um, still 80 points and 120 points to bring in those, those guys. Well, Nick Fury, you're not hardly seeing. Hardly yeah, all, because not many people are playing over 100 points. And, and, and shield level seven to me is the equivalent to, uh, Euroforge or whatever, Euroforge, sure. whatever. It's yeah. just, it's not, it's not overpowered. It's just versatile. Yeah. Right, and, and I think I think the big thing for me when I think about the ban list and advising you on the ban list is, yeah. what does it does it does it it'll still allow the game to be interactive? Yes, that's a big thing, right? So, as long as Mystique's was a big thing, right? Right. So, like uh, the book, necessarily, it, you still get to be interactive, but you're just pound 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 yeah. pound, and. You know, that's not – it doesn't necessarily give your opponent a chance to retaliate. Right, right, uh, right. Uh, especially with no DDM these days. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. You know, you know, same thing with uh, team bases and especially the orange ba- orange uh, battery and the yeah. Ophidian. Copycat, same thing. Justin oh, God. C- you know, Justin Seifert, uh, robot moves out, shoots, oh. then, then calls out an ID now. That's, that's, that's too much. <laughs> too much. Also, you know, in this format, you can back signal them back. Right. And because I remember David, uh, David Gosselman was like, what do you think of this idea? And it was like a Krang, Seifert, and a Batmite. And right. for, this was like for 400 Limited, and it was just busted. Because Batmite, they would all go out there do their thing, and then Batmite would call them back, and then you have the nurse to heal. And I was like, oh, that that is pretty dumb. But so, yeah. So yeah, that's a little peek right there behind the curtain. Now people know you're one of the guys that advising the <laughs> on the ban list. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, as long as it maintains um, yeah. interactivity, the then sure. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to ask you something. There was something that I I wanted to ask you. Now I just damn it. <laughs> I was actually wondering, out of the uh, the teams, was there anything that surprised you in Denver? Um, I would say probably there was two things, um, having the Omega drive on Gobby. Ooh, yes. Um, that, that was, that was pretty clutch. Um, you and know. And that was just regular power action, right? He's not, he doesn't have split or anything. No, no, he didn't. I mean, he nailed it in our game. I don't know how often he nailed it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I will, and the other thing is, um, you know, I'll, this is me kind of, uh, I guess, scratching the host here a little bit. Um, 
Chase, I, I really did enjoy how well your team worked. Yeah, um, I just I, need a better person to feel that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was watching some of your other matches and, you know, the, the interaction with the witch and uh, Slate is really neat. Um, I think that's just a clutch thing. Um, you know, a, may, maybe personally I would play a few things different, but I, but I think you really have it more well put together than I had initially thought on first passes. Well, Pat and I put some time into this team for sure. Yeah, he came with the he came with the idea, and actually originally I think didn't we didn't we have like green battery on it? And there was like a joke. It was thought, a joke, bizarre joke yeah. And then so I was like, all right, let's try and keep people from time. getting across the map as fast. Yeah, so I was like, give me some time, let me give him a look, and then uh, we switch it up to Indigo because we, you know, one of the things was like, oh, at no cost now versus free action, char- you know, on your charge. So I was like, well, we don't need that. And you know, a cu- couple of like initial like it just didn't work as well. It didn't it didn't stop as many things as it was supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I think then, Indigo was originally, and then you were like, let's go green. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then we went back to Indigo, and then uh, I switched it to Bizarre Green Arrow. Changed, look, looked at the uh, ID cards, made it a little bit. A little bit more resilient. Pat's, so Pat definitely had the ID cards in this. And then I changed the, uh, to the level seven. The you're the one that came with the Superman and stuff. Yeah. And then the map was uh, the big one. Yeah. Because that it had to be that map. Because it's the only one that's open like that, unless you play like the park or something. Right. But um, there's a new one that's coming that uh, the rocks got out as well though. That's very open. And I'm trying to think of the name. I just saw it. A strange, a strange day in the park. It's the new. Uh, it's the new monthly viable this time. <clears throat> it's really open as well. It actually I was looking. It might even be technically. I think it was almost more open than than the sporting arena. It doesn't have like that. It didn't have as much even as Hendry. But that just it just is a brand new map. So I was looking at that. I was like that could be a good map as well. Yeah. But sporting arena works great. So. I just every time I'm playing, it's a brand. It's a, like a new learning experience for oh that interaction. Like when I got energy explosion earlier in the day, and you came over here after, and you're like, uh, "Green Arrow should have taken it all," and I was like, mm. "Yeah." Instead, that that hurt. Yeah, did um, I know we started the uh, the judge program certification. Did you uh, have you? Tested anyone yet? Uh, I have not. I'm going to be testing Jay Solomon on Saturday. Okay. So, yeah. yeah so after after Jennifer, I just got back from my vacation, the rest of my vacation today. So, uh, I, I published how to do it, and uh, now I'm open for business. So. Okay, nice. I think, I've, I think I've got another one scheduled for Sunday, uh, and I'll probably try to line up a couple more on Saturday. Now, is this just for Majestics, or is this for The Rock? No, this is The Rock. This is the rock certified. That's yeah. what I wanted everyone to know. Yeah. So it should, it should be good. I think we're going to eventually do a version of that with just Rock Age interactions. Because uh, one of the main questions people ask Lydia, that's one. Uh, yeah. Things that uh, people still ask about the uh, green battery and the at no cost versus free action. So something like <clears throat> says he can do pulsive as a free action after uh, the green battery won't stop that because the new wording is you do pulsive at no cost so slate would be able to pull or he would be able to um, perplex and then still do the pulse wave in the old rules he wouldn't be able to do that because he'd right. have to perplex and then you can't pull you, you just have to do pulse wave no perplex so things like that um, I think Omega drive we have to you know, just like new wording would be just run protected out with um, things like that. So that's that's. I think that's going to be in the works. Like Alex is looking at a lot of these questions we're we're uh, putting together. So that's um, uh, another one is can use because there's a difference between can use and and the old because the old can use was it had to be on your dial. No, possess right? can use. So possess, or possess, now, yeah. possess now is uh, it's either vis- it's visible because they have that wording is visible now. So if you possess something, you actually it needs to be visible. So, like, it needs to be visible on your dial somehow. So, like, if it says uh, something that says you can't, like, you can't use the carry ability, ability unless you possess the wing symbol, let's say, then 
in the new rules, it would say visible, so they'd actually have to have the wing symbol like on the dial. That that's that's like a rough translation. So, um, one thing that did find out find out about today, and I think a lot of people will be using Gauntlet. Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet says in the setup, you cannot include special objects on your floors if you play the Gauntlet. It actually says that on there. Well, so that was the Gauntlet came out before that. Yep. Yes, yep. That was that was in the rule book. Yeah, yeah. But now because of that it's actually you still can't because it's on the cards. So that's right. it's it's funny because a couple of people that have been playing Gauntlet are playing with like Gamma Bomb and stuff, and I'm like, wait a minute, like everyone had missed it, like every single per like every single judge player because nobody had brought it up until one of the guys today, Eric Pitzer, actually messaged me. He's like, hey, you can't play special objects this right? I was like, oh man. I don't right. think I don't think that's made it into your top fours though. Top eights, they have been. There, there have been. Uh, oh no, not, not in top eight. Sorry, uh, they're just been like played in the events. Right. Like uh, yeah. there's. Oh no, that actually has. Yeah, if you look at did Alonzo, Alonzo make did Alonzo, Alonzo make it the, top, he made a top eight was treadmill, uh, Goblin King treadmill. So you can't, you won't be able to do that. Mm, yeah. No, I I was well aware of that one because I was like, oh man, the gauntlet with. You know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you just just uni mind uh, gauntlet symbiote. Hey, uh, didn't um was like was like the first thing, and I was does, like, no, yeah. the gauntlet. Does it says, say special objects or relics? It just says special objects, and relics uh, are subcategory of special objects. Yeah, so that's why I was wondering. I didn't know if you could play the new stuff because I actually, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Did um I saw? I remember you guys were streaming um the actual Rock Age during your the Friday night of your uh super, mega super qualifier. Right. And I think David was playing Gauntlet and Unimine. Yeah, he was. And he had Lockjaw, right? Yes. Did he end up winning the whole thing? He, up... he did. He did. So it was only like four it was only like four guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it was uh but it looked pretty solid though as I was watching on on stream. Mm hmm Yeah, it wasn't themed. He played it with uh he played yeah. Unimine, Gauntlet. Did, um, did he play Lockjaw? With Lockjaw and um Something else, I maybe like a. a no, I think he had a group, but he had something else to get a fourth ID uh, uh, that, that broke theme, maybe like a carnage or something. Because um, we kind of just put it together last minute for him. Okay. So, are you going to the three v three? Uh, in Huntsville. Like, yeah. I. Uh, How far is that? So it's only about five hours, and and I haven't really. Message tower did. I I can't really go to that one this time. So and the uh, it, format is it's like Extreme Highlander, right? It is, and and the reason why I just want to say the reason why I can't go is is there's two mega super queues uh, in September. Uh, one's in Lexington and one's in Chicago. Uh, so Chicago's about six hours away from me. Uh, but but Adam Friedman Town. Yeah, it's Adam, but Chicago Adam. hasn't had a major rock event in about four years. Mm. Uh, so I want to make sure that I get up there and uh, show some support to those who's, guys. At, who's running it? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be at the Dice Jojo, and oh. uh, Nate, Nate White is uh, putting it on. So oh, Okay. And that's not to be confused with Nathaniel White. Correct. Yeah, Nathaniel White's out on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a thing on there. It was like, wait, I thought they're the same person. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you think it's the same person, though? Honestly, yeah, so I can only, I can only make two events next month with prep for Rock Cup and some mm -hmm. other commitments that I have. When is uh when is the Chicago one? Uh, it's the September eighth and the twenty second. Oh, they have two. No, no. So, sorry, September eighth is Lexington. September twenty second is Chicago. Oh, okay. And then September 15th is um, Howard's event. Do you think they're going to be a... So wait, the format there is just basically going to have one of anything. Correct. Extreme Extreme Highlander is what he's calling it. Including sideline and everything, right? Uh, sideline, maps, uh, ID nice. cards. What? Okay. Um, I actually really like that from a 3v3 yeah. format, because when you're trying to split up the teams and who you're going against that actually change that actually changes matchups completely in, um, matchups are more important now in magic they call that's actually a thing that they have for their world championships it's called unified 
It's called Unified Modern for them. So Modern for Magic is like Rock Age for us. And it's the same thing. They can only have four copies of any card between the four of them. Or the three of them, sorry. So this is it's like the same as this. So it should be interesting. You'll actually see a bunch of different teams. I actually really like that format. Yeah, it's good. Um, what do you think about running it for in December instead of the? Oh, it's sealed anyway. Is it yeah, three, 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 so, three sealed so like, anyway? Are, Never mind. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, so do you think there's gonna be a lot of pe- like? Are there a lot of people showing up for that? Because I'm interested to see like what what it looks like. Uh, I think so. Uh, I think he's got five or six teams already signed up. That's that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's already fifteen people. Yeah, 15, 15, 18 people. Shoot. Oh, what? Um, but so you you probably heard. I actually already mentioned how how uh, I, I did. I already I actually messaged you about the how we're gonna do the format on Fridays. Or no, maybe it was PJ. But the the formats are uh, see, uh, it's draft, rock, sealed, and modern. And so the Friday night of our event is three rounds of draft and then the Saturday morning is three rounds of rock age and then there's a small break and then the afternoon is sealed 300 sealed three rounds of that and then a small break and then the evening time is three rounds of modern and then after the, after those 12 rounds we're going to take the top four and play in Sunday morning and it's going to be rock age um, I can tell you I'm we're already going to be uh, I'm already hitting the gym in preparation. I'm gonna I'm starting that back. So nice. There you go. You got to be uh, prepared mentally and physically, right? Um, we are going to probably introduce the stop clock, the uh, stop clocks, chess clocks, chess clocks, only for the sealed and draft portions for for the ten of you guys. So I think it'll be easier in that just because there's there's less tracking. So it's actually going to be a test run to see how it goes. But basically how, it, how it's going to work is you get 20 minutes each. And so that's 40 minutes. And then whatever left the, the leftover time. Because when the time is called, let's say you're playing Chase and then Chase's time is done. When it's called on his, he gets to finish his turn and he has one more turn. And then after that, whatever, let's say he took three extra minutes, then there's, those three minutes will be added to your time. And then when it's when whenever uh, it goes back to his turn, he's not going to have an action phase. It's just going to be the beginning and end of turn, and then he presses the clock and it goes back to you until the time uh, matches, unless you beat him before that, obviously. But I think that um, so far it's been, you know, maybe we could tweak it here and there, but... So far, it's been pretty good. Um, there's been a lot of uh, positive feedback on just the amount of turns they get to play. They can play, like, they play 7 to 10 turns easy, if not more, because they're just, you know, obviously the downside of it is now they're, like, pressured to hurry up because they have to only worry about their own time, and there's, no, you know, obviously no stalling. But they, um, it can be a little, uh, you know, a little... Uh, a little uh, taxing on on somebody to to have to worry about their own time and that, but I think that I think that'll people just go gr- accustomed to it, because then it also forces them to, to plan out their turns like ahead of time so that they can just finish their turn right away and then go on to the next thing. That's so, what my opponent turns for is to plan mine. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That's that's and it'll force them to do that because uh, as of right now, it's just kind of like oh, just wait to see what they do. And then when it goes your turn, well, you do, okay, now let's figure out what I got to do. And, you know, it takes up a lot of time. And I think with this, obviously with these chess clocks, they're going to, uh, m- you know, minimize. Well, actually, it's just going to eliminate stalling altogether because you well, still get your 20 minutes no matter what. Yeah, you know that there's nothing your opponent can do to affect you in that manner. Yeah. And you know then, one, I mean? yeah, and one of the cool things about, uh, <clears throat> about the clocks that I have, you know, is uh, there's a pause button. So if you call a judge for a question, the judge will come over, pause it, and then, uh, so then nobody loses any time and then can answer the questions accordingly, you know, what, however long it takes, and that's your extension. Basically, that, you know, it just pauses, and, you, and, it is just, and then the, the judge will leave and press the button, and then you just continue again. So, uh, but there is something that uh, someone brought up. Well, uh, if, there's an, uh, if there's a decision 
on your turn that your opponent needs to make. Yep. They're going to have 30 seconds to decide what they want to do. An example would be, all right, Chase, I pop your Unimine. It's my turn. I pop your Unimine. You can't spend three minutes to decide where to put your three guys because it's my turn. You're going to have 30 seconds total to decide where you want to put your uh, figures. And likewise... So whenever that stuff happened in other games, like so that... Um... Like, I saw Chess Clocks in War Machine, the tabletop mm-hmm. game. They, because the same, very same premise, same reasons why, all that kind of stuff. They would, whenever it was other person's turn interactions, they just popped it back to that person. What do you mean? They, just, they literally what? just popped that person, which just oh, popped the time, back to Oh, them. I get it. I, oh, you know, oh, that's actually a good point. Yeah, so, so if you're placing characters, if you're doing anything like that. In this, not obviously not rolling shape change or anything like that, but you know, it would it would, be, it would be a decision like that, like a replacing yeah. effect. Um, and I, I think that's something you got to lay out, like give yeah, a plenty sure. of examples for sure as best you can, so that everybody understands what is and what isn't able to pop back. But yeah, that's a good point. That's a yeah, good I mean, if, but if we're just trying it on sealed, and you know, you can take it's a look. not going to happen. Yeah, that's yeah, why we're can, I mean, you can take a look at the set, right? As long as there's no uni mind and. Battle world or whatever will be used. So we can. If, so that's why it's good to do it right here for you know for seal and draft because then at least we get a test run to see. I think people are really gonna like it. But you know it's weird. You know the thing is like for the ten for the ten guys that are gonna be here. All the guys are pretty efficient and fast. Yeah. So I feel like it's not even gonna. It's not really gonna affect anything. But it's just there just to see how it works. You know. But it's also a great place to start it too. You have. Ten guys that all know what they're doing. You're, you're going to get good feedback from that situation. And there is just times I'm frustrated when I'm playing when my opponent doesn't know stuff, or I'm sometimes that opponent as well. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. you know when I'm like trying to explain everything, I'm like, well, how does that work on your stuff? And I'm like, come on, or we have to call a judge over five times. And now I'm in, in my head. I'm sitting here like, I, I still need to kill 25 points, and now I'm wasting it for the judge to come over. Yeah. So, so here, that's that's one of my secrets, Pat. That's why that's why I started judging. Is so I knew all the answers. To my pu- <laughs> so, yeah. uh, whenever whenever somebody comes over, I just explain to the judge, "Hey, this is what happened, and here's the rule book. Go." And then he's like, "Yep, you're right." And I'm like, "All right, let's go." Yep. Yeah. I was right. I was right a minute ago before you called. Now let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That. Hey, that's. Dude, if you're right, you're right. You're right again. So. Helps to know helps to know the rules for sure. Um, but so you're you're gonna so you're only gonna be playing uh, anything over like so you got September. It's your schedule's booked. October is the Rock Cup. And uh, then, Rock uh, October is actually a super qualifier. I think we're going down to Little Rock for theirs. Uh, dude, super how cheap. far are these places from you? I feel like. You just named, like, four different states. Like, how far is this? For us, it's, like, that's, that's unheard of. He's in Indiana. He's in the middle of the country. Right. So, oh, li- uh, Chicago, Chicago, six-hour drive. Little Rock, Oh, yeah, because you're hours. farther down in Indiana. Okay. Yeah, and then the Little Rock's a six-hour drive. Alabama's five. Alabama's five. Lexington's three. Columbus, okay. Columbus is six. Um, yeah, that pretty. Atlanta's about six and a half, seven. When Rock Cup, when Rock Cup was there, uh, yeah, it's funny. There's all a lot of these places aren't the biggest places that have uh, events or whatever. Because like, you, I hardly ever hear. I know there's Gen Con, but you don't hear stuff from Indianapolis very much. And it has Indiana alone, isn't it? Have the most stores per capita or something like that? I'm pretty sure of like game stores. It's something ridiculous. There's so many game stores in Indiana, yeah. but they all stick within their. They a lot, a lot of times, especially even clicks and everything, they stick within their little their little group. Yeah, unfortunately, right? Like uh, PJ runs stuff in Kokomo, which is north of Indy. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've made several contacts at stores in Indy. We finally got one to run some rock events. Really? Which one? That's crazy. Uh, you guys are there. Uh, yeah, Keith's Key, uh, store. I forget the name of it in Greenfield, Indiana. Uh, but really, that's not even Indy proper. Uh, no. Yeah, you know, Greenfield's right outside of Indy. Um, but, I'm not uh, some savant. I used to live in Indy, Indiana. <laughs> for other people that, who don't know, like I don't just like study any Indiana culture and gaming. So yeah, no, uh, I you know I've tried to make some contacts there in Indy, but you know you're right. You know Indianapolis has probably at least six game stores that runs uh, clicks weekly. 
Um, and I know, just, I know that there's more than that, actually. Right. That's crazy, and there's not, and none of them want to do. Is it because they're just not competitive? They just don't have a competitive crowd. No, no, it doesn't matter. North side, west side, east side. It doesn't. It's never. I tried to get a, a rock out there, and when I talked to stores, it just didn't happen. It just nobody. When I talked to other player groups, I went around to almost every store playing, and when I asked around. Everyone's like, uh, I don't know. We try to get a big like store championship thing going for Indianapolis, like Star Wars. Nothing. <laughs> and and you know what's weird is that, is that it's not that they're bad players; they're just not oh. competitive. They, yeah. There there are some. I've gone up for some seals before. Uh, like we go up to the uh, Indy for a Colts game for the weekend, and um, we played some seals and pre releases, and they have some phenomenal uh, talent. And they just, they're just not competitive folks, which is yeah, a little, little up, sad. Some good, great, there, great people though. Yeah, I went there a couple of years ago after I moved back to, um, to Indy and I played at the game preserve on the south side off of, um, 31. And I never played Hero Clicks there before. Well, I went to, they had like 12, 13 people there on just like a Wednesday night. And, you know, where I was at the time of Ventura, California, I could barely, we barely were getting like five. Yeah. And, you know, they, they had all these cool things they were doing. And, heck, actually, the guy hooked me up with OP kits because my store wasn't even buying OP. It was all, we had a bunch of actual, threw me two Venom, like, through, you know, or the, the symbiote ones, all kinds of stuff. I was like, this is amazing. Great group, but nobody, they weren't big into the competitive side of things. Mm-hmm. No. Where does PJ run his super qualifiers? Because is, is it at a store? It is a store. There is a, there is a very nice store in Kokomo. Um, Kingdom Cards and Comics, I believe, that uh, <laughs> that has a very nice store. Um, la- earlier this year, when he ran it, he rented out a uh, banquet hall. Nice. Um, but then yeah. for the super, the super Q in May, you know, a little bit less attendance expected. Uh, he had 26 people still, but still they ran it, at the, ran it at the store, so uh, plenty still of Still a good amount. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How many do you think we're going to get at the cup? More than Atlanta? Oh, man. I tell you what. Um, I, I don't want folks to be scared away by the change in location. Um, I think that's the big thing for me. You can fly into Nashville. Huntsville's a good airport to fly into. Um, Howard's got yeah, space. Right. Ha- Howard's got the space. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, it, he wouldn't look like it if you showed up today, but he's got a plan to clear the store for space in October. Um, He's going to clear out the other gaming stuff in his store, and it should be enough room um, by all accounts. Um, So I I, I tell you what, I hope, the point being is I hope that there's just as many as there was in Atlanta. Um, I think you attract different people that wouldn't go to Atlanta. You attract them to go to Huntsville. Um, Um. How far have you been there? To Lucky Dice? Yeah, I've been yeah. there twice. How far twice? is the airport from his place? Um, I can't imagine it's that far, right? Not, Humphill's not a huge city, so maybe 20 minutes tops. Yeah, and so you'd like, there's always farther for the airport. or The one nice thing is you took the, the train and the, the public transportation you could take to pretty close to Atlanta and stuff like that. But uh, how yeah, far is Nashville? From uh, Nashville's about an hour and 30 to 45 minutes north. Uh, All right, I'm going to look actually for plane tickets there because I tried to look for plane tickets to Huntsville and I was having trouble from where I'm at. I could get in there for cheap, but I just wasn't allowed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't afford to come home. You did, uh, how far is the, how far is the store from where he lives? That that I don't know off the top of my head. Not not very far. Maybe fifteen twenty minutes. I mean, twenty minutes gets you pretty much everywhere in Huntsville. Do you? Um, oh man, I don't know if you remember the store that they or know that the the store that they ran the very first super qualifier they had back in twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. I want to know if that's if that's is that store still around? Do you I, know? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so are they close to that store? No, he's okay, so pretty much pretty much the other side of town from there. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Because I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say I'm like they're like down the street from them. Oh, because Howard's got a bigger place. Yeah. No. Um. It's like a Walmart uh, opening down the street, and you're like, crap. 
<laughs> no, that other store still still does stuff, as far as I know. Um, I mean, Huntsville's a fairly sizable town, um, so I mean, it, it could it supports multiple game stores, and I think that's why Howard opened up his on the other side of town too to uh, attract a little bit different clientele. He's got an awesome game store. It's got literally everything. Yeah, it looks cool. Food, coffee, right? I beer, alcohol, right? Yeah. <laughs> The uh, the food oh, really man. the food's great. I could I could spend a, an entire podcast talking about Howard's food. Uh, it's really that good. They have Nathan's hot dogs, right? Yeah, they have the good hot dogs. They have Nathan's uh, hot dogs there. The real treat, um, the real treat there is shoulder bacon. Now you 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 hear shoulder bacon and you're thinking, oh, that's Canadian bacon. No, Canadian bacon is still from the belly. This okay. is ba- this is bacon from the shoulder. Um, and I have gone around uh, here in Evansville where I'm at and I've called every butcher shop and they're most of the time they're like, we make it like once a year and it sells out. Howard has it every week. So wow. he, he's got the supplier down in Alabama with the shoulder bacon. I was going to say, who does he black know for that? Or how much clicks right. does that cost him? Right, exactly. Maybe that guy's a collector. Yeah, yeah seriously. So you, uh, you show up. Uh, Pat, and the uh, you, you, first thing you say is you want uh, Easton to make you a shoulder bacon sandwich. Okay. So Easton works there, right? Mm-hmm. Is, does he – he was telling me he hasn't really been focusing on clicks or anything. Is he, uh, he going to be ready for – no, is he going to play or is he going to be, like, judging? That's a good question. I don't know. Man. He, he, he should be playing, I guess. I mean, someone's got to give you a challenge. I, I gotta, I gotta meet somebody in top two again. Because uh, apparently, uh, who was it? Damn it! Doesn't give you a challenge. Who was it? Mentioned it, and you said, "I'll sell it. I'll say it to his face." Oh, Maddie, Maddie G. Maddie G. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, but he's he's closer to there now too, right? No, he moved to the other side of Indiana. Oh. Uh, he actually went further away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what'd you scare him off, man? Oh, I think he wanted to be closer back to his family. So. <laughs> kind of well, hard to argue with that one. So, you're going to be defending the title, right? Because obviously we didn't get to uh, convince you to judge. Damn I can't. I can't do. I can't do it if I'm going to be defending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so somebody. Yeah, I, think that, I think that's probably the best thing. Not who today. is your biggest challenge there? Ooh. On the spot. Uh, so I tell you what. Who's uh, going? Oh man, you want me to name a name right off the bat? I know you do. Let's do uh, it. But I, but I can tell you what. This year, no the, field, the field has gotten a lot better. Um, rock do the rock doing rock online. Um, folks are practicing better. I think the the social media has gotten uh, much more. I don't want to say diluted, but there's been a whole lot more of that between your videos. Uh, quick stop videos from my group, um, you know, the Twitch streaming that's been going on, all, all right. the li- live streaming. So Who the, are you the, scared the, of? Who the field's going to get big. The field's going to get a lot bigger. I I tell you what, it's um, folks that have practiced. You're supposed to say nobody. You know what? I scared no one. You know what? You you are always scared of everybody until them dice start to fall. Um, Come on, man. Oh, I, was, man. I was setting that up <laughs> Like, no, uh, no, man. I, uh, I tell you name, what. One day, what name, name that you're like, that guy has a chance to give me, like, he has, he's going to give me a run for my money. Sam Powell. Oh, come on. She's right I, there. She's on No, the, she, she's downstairs, actually. But, uh, right, uh, besides, besides immediate family. Besides, besides immediate family, family. Besides my teammates. Obviously, you know, I, uh, Lane, uh, Lane's done really well with the Blackbird. Uh, you know, if PJ. I tell you what, honestly, yeah. honest, to, honest to goodness, I'm worried about PJ. If PJ buckles down, plays a real team, not bullshit. That's what you're saying. I get it. Right. If he plays a real team, and he knows I, I mean this, out of, he knows I mean this out of the depth of my heart. Okay. Uh, that uh, I'm saying this politely. If PJ plays a real team. Um, I'll be worried about it. All right, you heard it here first. Dan's scared of PJ. All right. <laughs> I, I openly admit. Now my boy Easton 
if he can if he can practice. That's what I'm saying. Been, That's what I, I was like. Is he playing? Like, he hasn't been doing nothing, he hasn't anything. He hasn't been playing much this year. Um, he needs to he needs to buckle down and. Uh, well, he's working right. a lot. Right? And going to school, so yeah, school and work, yeah, that's that's tough, man. Well, it could be the first two-time champ, man. I, I'll tell you what, I I've got two teams. You asked me if I had my team nailed down earlier. Um, I have one team that if you asked me if Rock Cup was tomorrow, I'd be ready to go. Um, and I'm working on team number two to run it through the gauntlet, um, uh, and see what happens. Starro, Unseen, what else? I, I will know. never I will never play Unseen. I don't care if it's okay, the best. Okay, Starro and Lockjaw. Okay, what else? Star Fox, what else? What do we got? Moon Dragon, I don't know, whatever. Just name whatever cosmic you can think of, Groot. But it's, it's Star Starro something. You know what? To, it, it is. You know what's funny is that PJ and I both posted that we wanted Starro, and everyone's like, oh, God, Starro's good now. And I'm like, <laughs> Starro's been well, good since it was released. I've just been too lazy to go buy one. But, I mean, Pedro won. Pedro won uh, Brazilian Nationals with Starro, so that's, right. that's it's, it's on the map. Right. And that and then I was like, that's what triggered both of us to say, shit, now we got to go get one. Yeah, because you, you have to at least test it. Just like... Just like when um when PJ won uh, Canadian Nationals, like you have to look at Blackbird. Yeah. I, but no, that was the thing. I told everybody. I tried to say from the top of the rooftops, look out for the damn yeah. Blackbird, and that, and that's for Rock Cup, right? So I, I tell you what, this goes back to what I like about the current competitive scene that is uh, that we have. I like Cosmic Beans. That's one of my favorite things. That's why you're Uni Dan. And you know what? I, I I'm not. I've won four events this season without Uni Mine now. Um, <laughs> Just so everybody knows. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, the cosmic the cosmic stuff's one of my favorite things in the comic books to read. It was my favorite whenever uh, I watched cartoons. Uh, the, Silver uh, Earth. Is that your favorite from the Marvel New Fifty Two? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, here's the thing, right? I have no doubt in my mind that I could go play Blackbird and do fine. Yeah. I could go play Gotham City Underworld and do fine. I could play Overdrive Samcap and do fine. Yeah. But I like the cosmic stuff. Yeah. It's just as simple as that. I mean, the, the other stuff's the same thing. It, it's hard to kill. It hits hard. Yeah. Um, got a ton of perplex, ton of prob, ton of outwit. Um, all those good support powers. I just like the cosmic. What do you think of uh, What do you think of that? Uh, bat, was it the Batman? Batman, Batman Beyond. Gotham City? So the, that's what, what I was Gotham literally going to bring it's up. Gotham City. It, you know, I think it was. I don't know. I think it's the Batman family because it's Batgirl, the the title character, Batman Beyond, two Alfreds. Commissioner Bruce Barbara Knight. Gordon is she Batman family too? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I thought I she was up really quick. Either way, but. Did you did you uh, did you see that team, Dan? I did. That was that was the one that won Washington State. The, uh, was, uh, yeah. Al, Alex Polier. The uh, two booster seal team that beat the uh, X Men Blackbird. <laughs> team. That's pretty nuts. That's yeah. that's some Chuck Norris shit right there. But yeah, I, this is what I wanted to bring up, and I want to ask you guys about this. Is stealth a legitimate thing when you're looking at at teams right now? Because it all has stealth, and yeah. they're they're when you look at the the um, dang it. The X Men Blackbird team. There's not really hardly any stealth busting in it. There's not, but they're gonna. I mean, Wolverine's gonna be charging in. But other than Unimine, yeah, there's no way to uh, to really get around stealth. But uh, like against with the X Men teams, they have charge, sidestep, they'll get in. That, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, Star Fox. So how much has, can you get rid of before they get there? Uh, you can get around because those those depending on how many Wolverines you're running, that's six attacks, man. They're gonna die, and me only on Star Fox doesn't matter. So, and that's a flurry attack. I thought you saw a development line of fire. Don't you? You you do. You know you do have to have. So stealth does stop. Oh really? I thought you can still. Yeah. I thought it's just close. You just need to see the square, right? No, mm -mm. you gotta draw it to the character. Oh, okay. All right. Well then. Yeah. Then. 
So I, I, I thought it was just with I thought it was just basically like a big giant reach. The the problem is in general, um, pulse yeah, waves still, pulse waves still exist in the format. Yeah. Um. So you know your positioning can only be so great in forty five minutes. You're either going to open yourself up to that charge attack, or you're going to open yourself up to that single target pulse wave. At least to get some points scored. Yeah. Uh, right. Now, I mean, if you're a, you know, if you're a dice god and that Batman Beyond rolls seven to eight shape changes in a row, then but statistically, right, the Wolverines are going to flurry through that eventually. Yeah. Uh, you have everything in that team, though, too. You have prob, you have perplexes, you have a, the pseudo prob, too, from uh, uh, Bruce Wayne. On Batman Beyond, and then you also have those free, those different kind of move actions you can pull with, um, what's her name, uh, Batgirl, and she kind of, and she has the, the ability to, and with the one, the minus to attack twice as well in a turn, which helps getting through some at least one of the uh, fifty point Wolverines. I look, I'm not saying the team is the best thing ever. I just think it proposed an issue that people aren't seeing, which is stealth. Yeah, stealth, stealth has been a thing since. June 1. Yeah. Um, it's something I hadn't thought about until I saw that team, though. Right. Um, well, now, to be fair, I, you know, I, I played, I mean, I was playing Cersei over the summer on Uni Mind. Um, so, you know, I think the, uh, the, just not to derail too much there, but Uni Mind's just missing Mastermind. So, Leech, Leech can only take away one or the other, Stealth <laughs> or Mastermind. But, um, no, I think that's the other one. It really is, you know, mastermind on your GCU teams, the stealth on your Batman family or your uni mind. Um, you know, being able to get those on first uh, does slow down your X Men, but the X Men can have enough attacks to power through it. You're talking about the Blackbird team going into Rock Cup is going to have three Cyclopses on the team. And five super rare Wolverines on the team, and theoretically, yep. it could go get four Wolverines on the board uh, and make the attacks, maybe depending on if it's got the free attacks available or not. Yeah. Um, but how, how legit do you think that team is? The the that Batman Beyond team. I think the kid had a really great day. I won't take away from his day. I don't think I can recommend that team. <laughs> Um, Same here. That's I, I think too. I mean I I don't know. It's it's to me it's not it it's, it's a not, little it's, it's a little short on range and it's a little short on firepower. Uh, but it's far. different. It is and different and it's good. And it is the first uh like full on like Batman animated archetype that uh, that is And it was Batman. All out of it. And you're right. You literally, because I looked at when I got home, like you could, you, if you opened two boosters, you could have made that team if you got lucky. Maybe that he was did. amazing. Maybe he's that good and he opened it and just dominated. Yeah. Now, I think the other thing that you will see is you will see that Gotham City Underworld uh, archetype forming the next uh, seven weeks or so. Can you say five, five teams that people have to look out for? Five teams? I think that... Because the U.S. Cup is also coming, so people who are going to be coming, it's like in it's like two and a half weeks. And that's 300 modern, Pat? 300 yeah. modern. So, yeah, I mean, for the USA Cup, you would say, number one, I mean, not in no particular order, I should say, mm -hmm. one, GCU, two, X-Men Blackbird, three, X-Men Swarm, um, the Cosmic Team, um, and then Unimine would be easy if I kind of subdivided them down a little bit further. Mm. Just uh, Sam Cap's still good. Shredders are still good. Um, and just that Penguin combo, um, the, the the SR Penguin, the Fast Horses Penguin, and the title Harley on non-theme is a great package as well. And I think it's what, like uh, 105, 110, 30, 130 points. Um for that combination, that is just good on non. What's the what's the title? What's the thing with the title Harley? So the the title Harley, 
uh, replaces its attack with the super rare penguin's attack and does the free attack on the fast forces penguin to move the loyalty token, which moves the penguins. Yeah. Um, and then the penguin on the turn after it produces the penguin can then power action move the penguin. So the penguin gets two free moves across the map. Uh, and then a plus two perplex from Harley. Uh, and then the big Tonys are doing their thing as well. Does why does it have to be the title Harley though? What would she do for it? Uh, it just be anybody. Well, it it could be. It could certainly be anybody. It could be your Tigra, like BJ played at nationals. Um, but one title Harley when she's on theme is, is just good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the title Harley really comes into play uh, with the plus two perplex on our plus one. Um, the energy explosion. Um, it's kind of like a third, the third power. The second power is when she gets to plus six, she makes the Harley Pogs. Makes the dudes. Makes the Harley Thugs that don't count towards your total. Um, and with trouble alert being a thing, those guys can flurry and miss, and then you get a trouble alert out who then can do a real thing for you. Do you think trouble alert should be on the sideline of X-Men teams? They don't have room. Not, so. not typically. Um, yeah, you're going to fill up like seven to nine slots already. You might have. I, I, I think you. I think you could. I think you could have one. That's what I'm uh, saying. You might have one. You might have one. I, and here's the thing. Do you really ever want more than two? My, well, so my Colorado team. That was the only thing I didn't have with a trouble alert. Um, but that's because you had to use it with the hammers. The, the hammers. Also, you're spots. not going to miss with your 15 attack. Come on. I did. I did miss. I Three needed times? a no. Three times, though? No, I did crit miss with Lockjaw though. But uh, um, but no, I th- I think you won't ever physically need more than two. Um, Adam did a pretty good article that I mostly agree with on that. Yeah. Yeah. Site. Um, I think he placed maybe it was Firestorm a little bit lower than I would have. Um. I'd have to read the article again. There was one of them that he placed just a tad touch lower than my opinion, but uh, I, I don't think there's any reason to not ever, ever use them, ever have, ever have them completely fill up your sideline. Right. Um, because right. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right. I could probably give you a scenario where you would need that trouble alert. Yeah. Are you likely to face said scenario? Very tiny amount. But. If you have it, you got it. If you don't got it, you need it. What are you gonna do? It's not costing you anything. You That's know. right. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, never put in a trouble alert at the cost of taking away something else. That's needed. Uh, like like Adam said in his article. Yeah. Uh, if you've got two or three spots left, use it. Yeah, and plus, uh, I think the other thing too is as much as what I'm hearing so far and what I'm seeing is that for. You actually don't bring them in as often as you think you would. You you get more opportunities to bring them in than you actually do, because they could actually be more costly to your team. That's right. It depends on what kind of team you're facing, what kind of firepower it has. Um, I think I've had the opportunity to bring in one uh, once when I had a Cyclops Christmas after a prob, um, and the points were super tight, and it was later in the game, and I was just. Said no, Cyclops just sidestep off the board, buddy. Uh, I don't, I don't need you today um, to call in a trouble alert. Uh, it, it just depends, but it's always there if you need it. It doesn't cost anything, so you might as well use. And it's, not, it's one of those things. It's not like the chases are really expensive either. Because um, they're doing that one per brick, weren't they? Mm-hmm. One per brick. I think most That's of them nice around. Too. Huh? Sometimes, Sometimes too. Sometimes too. Yeah. yeah, so you're looking at like $30 for most of them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know like what? Firestorm yeah, it, goes for more. Yeah, it's Firestorm just like there's, It's just that like there's 12, that's why. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, like for me, I go back, I said earlier in the podcast here, um, I'm a collector. And that Aquaman with a seahorse <laughs> looks awesome. And I tell you what, if I can have Aquaman on a seahorse, on my sideline all day, then I absolutely will. Um, you know, because if I have, you know, five ID cards 
with uh, six different options um, and then two actual trouble alerts. Put Aquaman on there. He looks pretty awesome. I don't have I didn't have any other use for him before, so might as well. <laughs> Do any of these chases look like they have a place at their full point on a team or even a small point? Um, I think, ooh, I think the closest thing would be Wonder Woman's not unique. Um, that's probably the best thing I've seen so far. Uh, the re- they're all a bit squishy, um, otherwise. But you know what? They're, uh, they're pretty efficient at, yeah. you know, like at the, whatever, the 60 point, like, you know, the 30, 60 splits. The 60 point ones are pretty good. The fi- yeah. Again, that firestorm is pretty good for that sixty points. Yeah, I could see them being. I could see those for sure. Um, they're. I mean, obviously, with Batman animated, could be kind of hard because they don't uh, get around stealth. So that that could be a you know because firestorm is amazing, but if you can't see anybody, then well, what's the point? So, right. Uh, what do you think of Venom? Real quick, what do you think of Venom Harness? Think that should gonna be something. I tell you what, if um, an easy swap for me, if I didn't own a Mjolnir, um, and I was playing on Star Fox, hit the Troll Team, mm-hmm. put the Venom Harness on Star Fox. Yeah. Uh, you know the flurry from range is fine. It is wonderful. Um, the plus two perplex is really what Star Fox is there for, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and you know, if if somebody's going, if you're going to really need to flurry somebody that badly, I said this before when I included Star Fox on a Blue Flame, they're coming to you. Shredders are going to base you. Um, yeah. Sam Cap's coming for you. Um, so uh, the Venom Harness is is an easy, most of the time Mjolnir replacement if you can't afford the Mjolnir. Right. Now, do I, I see like anything? Do I see anything that necessarily abuses the Venom Harness? Um, "Quote unquote" abuses it, not particularly. Um, you know, there's some things that can do actions after carry. Um, you know, besides Sam Cap, um, or like anything like the the Shredders mm-hmm. uh, that that need it. Um, the, the fact that they can activate it after carry is neat. Um, That's true, but it's not. It's not game warping necessarily yeah seven points though that's something you should probably look at all the time yeah. yeah well and the fact that we got three point ids now right yeah so, so that's yeah. 10 points right there yeah perfect right so so you see either do you want 10 points for mjolnir or seven I and a three yeah. seven and seven and three um yeah. depending on your team composition just as an example i like that all right well is there anything else that we want to touch on guys uh, that's that's it. Just we got Fresno this weekend. Did you ask me the big question you wanted to ask me, Pat? Did you remember it? Oh, man, no. What was it? Damn it! I thought, thought I did. What was it? I what thought was it? it was just uh, the arm wrestling thing. <laughs> I thought it was the match G one. Oh no, no, yeah. Either one of those is fine. I don't mind to answer those. <laughs> no, what was the what was the big question? Did I miss something? I don't know. No, I don't remember. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, those were the. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we got Fresno this weekend. So that's the next stop, and then Arizona uh, after that. And Arizona the week. That, that's crazy. It's like next. So just three weeks, stops so. in a row. Well, yeah, three stops in a row, and then the U.S. Cup, and then Rock Cup after that for us. So, so. there's there nothing in between September eighth, U.S. Cup, and Rock Cup. Uh, not, for us, not for us out here. On the West Coast. Yeah. So it's like a month off for just preparing. And right technically right. the Rock Cup isn't really an, our side of things. It's a you. I'm trying to still go. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, it is still hard for a lot of people to get over there. But I just looked at tickets to Nashville, though, and it's a lot cheaper. So I'm thinking <laughs> about doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's possible to get down there. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It takes a little bit more doing. Um you know, to get a ride down there and arrange transportation, but, um, you know, it, it's doable, right? Um, yeah. 
But, but to be fair, Pat, um, I would say, and Chase, I started looking at tickets to come out in December, and uh, I now empathize with, uh, with you guys in California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, it's actually, but the funny thing is it's not California. It's, it's the Midwest. That's the harder thing. There's like certain airports that are super cheap to fly into. And then there's other ones like Chicago is super cheap, but Indianapolis is expensive. They're small. It's like, crap, man. And, and they're not even that small, but you know, but then you look at Denver, like Denver's always super cheap to fly into. Cause it's, it's a big, that's a hub. Denver's a hub. I know. It's just, it's one of those things. Like so, there's like all these cool places I want to go. Atlanta, I can get back and forth from from Atlanta for 150 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was the appeal to that was my that's my biggest appeal. Everything else I like better about, you know, the thing is just the Huntsville. Is, <laughs> so, but again, not trying to deter anybody. I'm still trying my ass off to get there. So, man, is that the first time I've cussed on this podcast? I think it is. Oh, God, you said oh, oh, that's so that's, terrible. You know, I brought, out, I brought out the worst in you, Chase. Thanks a lot, Daniel Powell. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, uh, a few things I do want to mention before we go. Uh, you can check out my game against Daniel. Uh, that I'm Daniel played a very good game, and I tried. Um, the other game, be- <laughs> I, <like laughs> I tried. That. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I tried to make Pat. Tried to make. But he Pat cheated happen. with a petrified wood. That's what. That, that's, that's what um, I don't even. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, so that was uh, that game's up. We also have the finals between Daniel and Hobbit, and that was an amazingly game uh, played game between both of you guys. Yeah. That was uh, a really clean, really good game. It oh, all yeah. came down to one. Little mistake, I think. I'm not saying it wouldn't have gone your way either way, but I think there was that. That was a huge change point with that, uh, with uh, him missing that, uh, that I wit. Uh, also missing the battery. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's between like like that was yeah. a mistake. No, yeah. no offense, Hobbit. You played an amazing day, an amazing game, bringing Goblin King that far. But uh, that was the only like thing that I really saw that you know changed from the mistake point of view. Um, other than that. You can also check out all of Daniel's articles and a lot more on MajesticCCG.com. It's $3 a month to become an Apex Insider, and i kicking myself still that I didn't do it sooner, um, but it's probably I, – I check the articles constantly. And I actually reread through some of them because there's stuff I look at and I forget about. Um, Daniel, right now, there's a new one right now. We have uh, all the, the lists, all the modern lists. Oh, really? From, uh, from states, there. states, provincials. Tiago did oh, a good really? job compiling it. So with I mean, the help of, you know, Dan too. How many, how many different people can put articles up there right now? Oh man, I saw, just like the regular writers, we probably have yeah. ten writers. And then uh, you still have other contributors too. But, but there's also a bunch of people that just, you know, like just mm-hmm. Dust Cedars will contribute every once in a while. Like yeah. Pedro is writing an article for his Brazilian Nationals team, so that's gonna be. Yeah. And Dan also, Dan has his, the, the, the Click Stuff podcast too, right? I do. We Yeah, we are everywhere now. Um, at, we're soundcloud.com uh, forward slash Click Stuff. We have the Click Stuff Facebook group. We're on Podbean now. We do a Twitch broadcast once a week. Uh, mm-hmm. And we have a YouTube channel as well, um, all under Click Stuff. Nice. It. There you go. It's just a lot, a lot of content. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's pretty impressive how much stuff is out there right now. Yeah. Um, other than that, like I said, say, I would say Dan and his crew, especially Dan, is one of the pillars of the, of this community now, for sure. Well, his face pops up every everywhere every, yeah. to every event he goes to. Yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> so it was really cool to finally meet you, by the way, because yeah. I know that, like I said, it's so funny that I talk about people and I actually don't know them sometimes. Like when we're talking about events, or when I used to do Generation Clicks, we talk about all these people. I'm like, I've never met you. So, all right, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to personally sign out and say that I'm good. I feel like I, I contributed to a good podcast today. <laughs> so, uh, Daniel, any last words? No, thanks for having me on again. I enjoyed uh, meeting you in person as well, Chase, and and. Uh, Pat enjoyed playing in the... Uh, him in person? That's awesome. Oh. No, no. Oh. That, that um, would have been better. Um, 
No, I, I, I could have my, own, I could really have my own list of words about helping Chase out with his team and my ideas, but we'll have to. <laughs> I actually do that do want to talk to you about that. I want to hear what you have to say. We can, we can do that offline uh, on uh, later there. Uh, yeah. But no, I enjoyed playing the format. Um, you know, uh, Denver was a, it was a well ran event. Um, oh, man. Very nice venue. Glad you uh, can make the trip. Yeah, I was very excited to do it. So, um, and thanks for, uh, and thanks for having me on today. Anytime, brother. And uh, as usual, when uh, when in doubt, perplex the attack. All right, let me get this recording stopped. <laughs> I was like, are you, did you forget what to say? Yeah, I was like, what was I going to say? All right, here we go. Stop recording.